Mormonism Unveiled, or Life of Confession of John D. Lee, 1882, page 240. You can read this text at the end now. I hurried up the people and started the wagons off towards Cedar City. As we went out of the corral, I ordered the wagons to turn to the left so as to lead the troops to the right of us. McFarland rode up before the women and led them right up to the troops where they still stood in open order as I left them. The foremost man was about 50 yards behind the hindmost woman. So again, as we went out of the corral, I ordered the wagons to turn to the left so as to lead the troops to the right of us. Did they go out this way and turn left? Or did they go out this way and turn left somewhere? I think they went this way. Where do you turn left? And if he's turning left, the only purpose can be is to gain an advantage in distance, he says, because he doesn't want to be around for the horrible scene, which he's going to be committing in the wagon anyhow, so he's not escaping anything. When he says he's, he's trying to get away as quick as possible because he feels so bad, all he's doing is creating distance. He's not changing anything except distance. So this hypothetical left, if it's happened at all, must have occurred to help create distance. So they're out here leaving, and the next thing he says is, I saw this much, but about this time our wagons pass out of sight of the troops over the hill. I have disobeyed orders in part by turning off as I did, for I was anxious to be out of sight of the bloody deed I knew was to follow, which he's going to commit, so the sentence is contradictory. So what's, why, in my opinion, the only reason he's doing this is to create more distance so that no one in the Mormon side is in any danger of these two groups ever meeting again. Because there's going to be three-eighths of a mile gap between them. But he says when they left, the men were 150 yards behind. Well, where did the three-eighths mile gap come from? Well, in part of it, he says, I hurried them right by. We were going at a fast walk. Again, when he's speaking, he makes it sound like everything's down here. There is no hill to walk around. The, the furthermost hill would be something like this up here. And the Mormon camp is right off the side here. You have this hill that I referred to in that map, which is just up here to the Mormon camp. And when you look at the Gibbs map, it seems to be indicating this area that they walked out of here in a motion like this and maybe got killed in here and Lee's referring to a hill can only refer to a hill that's in this immediate area because there is nothing up here there's nothing here here's where the women are murdered here's where the men are murdered I think here's where they might have been murdered where the rock cairn is there's no hills there's nothing nothing here this is a good half a mile. And that half mile brings us back to this number that we get when we run lines out this way, which brings us back to this hill, which brings us back to Mormon obfuscations. So as to Lee leaving the corral and, and turning left, if he went out this way and turned left, ignoring the issue of gaining advantage by some other route that exists in this area, you've got the Spanish Trail, which isn't being used supposedly, the California Road, which was cut by the Mormons in 1848, I think, cut by the Mormon Battalion. And uh, so we, I have reason now to believe more firmly that this was part of that California Road. And I believe that this is how the road went, roughly. And then, then it cut across here and went up this way. But we have this rock cairn, and that takes us like this, down this way, which... I just, I don't know. But regardless, if it did happen, there had to be roads down here that split. You would go here, and you would come through here, and you would be able to come in here. See? Like this. You don't want to be crossing creeks with cows and wagons. You want to cross as few creeks as possible. 
Now all this erosion occurred in the 1860. There was a rain in 1863 or so that just created most of this. So a lot of this erosion didn't exist. Where it was 12 feet deep down here, uh, it was five feet deep in 1859. I can't make sense out of John D. Lee's statement. It indicates another road other than the road the men are going to walk on. And the men are 50 yards behind them, which seems to indicate they're starting to walk at roughly the same time. Now, they may have been there for a few more minutes, but three-eighths of a mile is, we're going to call it 10 minutes of walking. He says they're walking at a fast pace. And what he says is, when we had got out of sight, as I said before, and just as we were coming onto the main road, just as we were coming onto the main road, I heard a volley of guns at the place where I knew the troops and immigrants were. I knew they were there. Even though I just made a big deal about taking this other road so I could be out of the way of the deed that was to be done that I just couldn't imagine looking at. Our teams were then going at a fast walk with women and children. Well, to me, a fast walk would be three to four miles an hour at the very most probably three, it's five feet per second. So that's page 241. So when we got out of sight, which doesn't make sense because this whole area is open, the Mormons haven't bulldozed this out. When we got out of sight, and just as we were coming onto the main road, well, how does that work? If the, oh, if the main road really was over here, then they're having to walk like, this and they're coming on to the main road here women murdered men or possibly men again i was walking between the wagons the horses were going in a fast walk and we were fully half a mile from higby and his men whether they were here or here when we heard the firing as we heard the guns i ordered a halt and we <clears throat> proceeded to do our part Right in here is where that really happened. I got it marked here just so I can look in here without a big thumbtack. And Lee says, When we had got out of sight, as I said before, and just as we were coming on to the main road. So let's think about that. Just as we were coming on to the main road. Well, if this was, they took an alternate route and it's out here somewhere, and they're coming on to the main road here. If this is the main road, then they were, they were walking up this way. Spanish Trail is supposed to have been on this side of the creek. When the Mormon battalion made the road, my understanding is it was out here. It could have just been on the other side. But let's look at Hosiah Gibbs' map again. Again, I believe this is what's called the Massacre Hill. And it's that hill that's west of the Mormon camp, which is just over here. And he's showing them walking up this way, which is more or less that path I've outlined that I understand to be the road, main road. But this is labeled Old California Road. So did they come out this way and the men go this way? But it met up here. This is, this is if the rock cairn that's been discovered is accurate, then... It would have to be over here, right? So, so there's a lot of issues with maps. You know, that's, what, that's the whole problem. When you get involved with Mormonism, you, the maps don't make sense. The words don't make sense. The terrain doesn't make sense. You've got Nephi Johnson standing on a hill out here somewhere telling Indians to... There are no hills to stand on to yell to anybody. If you're, if you're standing out here, this, from here to here is a quarter mile. So, they destroyed every, every shred of evidence of who these people were. So now we're looking at maps, you know, made by well-intended people, uh, prints. There's, there's errors with it. There's problems with it. It can be sorted out, but they're there. Gibbs' map has problems. The Mormon stories have problems. John D. Lee's story doesn't make sense. 
So see that little creek right there? This is the same map reproduced in Juanita Brooks' book. So it's the same error. Excuse my scribbles. So this is Bagley's map on page 124. And the scale is off. It's a half a mile, not a mile. He puts the rim of the basin uh, right in here. But it's not. It's up here. This red line I'm trying to make conform to the Prince map. When you measure the numbers, as I've shown here in this video and others, you come out up here on Mormon Camp, Abe Spring. There's a spring there. You can see it on Google Earth. Little hill here. This comes off the road, but the, as I understand it, the main road would come through here. Come out this way. And this is that so-called Massacre Hill, which isn't anything. So my point is we've got the same errors perpetrated in three books. And then we have problems with the Prince map. None of that gets us any closer to the grave sites. We're just dealing with maps. We're on Google Earth, and now we're on the highway. See the camera? And this is possibly the main road. Might be a ditch, might be a piece of the Spanish Trail, but I don't think the Spanish Trail was on this side. I think it was on the opposite side of what we're looking. But anyhow, this is the general area where it takes place in. Let me rotate around for you. Do you see a hill that John D. Lee's talking about? Do you see a hill where Nephi Johnson could say something to some Indians? Hey! The ditch on the opposite side of the highway. And so, the men would be out here somewhere. I mean, you can't really see, right, at all, but just out here. So, I don't know what to make out of it. Just went up the highway just a little bit just to get a better view. You know, the original camp is way up here still. I just, you know, we're looking for hills. We're looking for all this terrain that John D. Lee's talking about. No, nope, don't see it.